Heavenly Places, En Toi et Pour Anio, by Charles H. Welch, 1880-1967. Editor's Note. Some teach that our hope and calling are not actually located in the super heavens, but that they are only heavenly in nature. Yet they are not merely heavenly in character, but they are, like Christ himself, far above all heavens in actual location. Our expectation and vocation are not among celestial beings in position, but literally located in super heavenly realms, or simply in the super heavenlies. In this article, Welch provides scripture evidence that the hope and calling of the one body is not merely positional, but is actually located where Christ sits on the right hand of God, Colossians 3, 1, into heaven itself, Hebrews 9, 24. The heavenly places, Ephesians 1, 3, KJV, were known at least in part in other ages. The expression, the heaven and the heaven of heavens, suggests that such a superior sphere was known, but no prophet, evangelist, or apostle ever dreamed that a redeemed company would find their sphere of blessing there, least of all, a company made up of alien Gentiles. First, let us examine the word itself, epuranios. This word is composed of epi, upon, and oranios, heavenly, the adjective form of auranos, heaven. Upon examining the epistle to the Ephesians, we discover that the word epuranios is there used in a form which occurs nowhere else. Antoi epuranios. This form occurs in five passages in the epistle. Antois epuranios in Ephesians. A. Ephesians 1, 3, spiritual blessings. B. Ephesians 1, 20, far above principalities and powers. C. Ephesians 2, 6, raised and seated together. B. Ephesians 3, 10, a witness to principalities and powers. A. Ephesians 6.12, Spiritual Wickednesses. The form in which these five references to heavenly places occurs is unique. It is found in no other part of the New Testament. The Ephesians phrase, en toi et pour anioi, is never merely defined as something heavenly in character. When Paul addressed this epistle to the saints which are at Ephesus, the words en Epheso do not mean that they were Ephesian in character while they were living somewhere else. No, they were actually residing in Ephesus. When the apostle reminded the Ephesian masters that they also had a master in heaven, Ephesians 6, 9, there could be no two thoughts about the fact that this master was not only heavenly in character, but also in position. He was there. The word where is indicative of a place and is used of the present position of Christ. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, Colossians 3, 1. This is said to be heaven itself, Hebrews 9.24, and in heavenly places, Ephesians 1.20. While unfollowed by a plural can mean among, Colossians 1.27, it can also mean in, for no one supposes that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob dwelt among tabernacles. They had enough common sense to dwell in them, Hebrews 11.9. The apostle not only has given these five references, which indicate the exalted and peculiar position of Christ in his one body, he has assisted us further by giving an explicit statement in Ephesians 4.10 concerning the ascension. There Christ is said to have ascended far above all heavens, the word translated far above being huperano. This position is so far above all heavens that by ascending to the sphere, Christ is able to fill all things. Many words used in the English language are derived either from Latin or Greek. Some words are derived from both tongues, and are employed severally as the genius of the language dictates. Thus the Greek huper becomes the Latin super, and while we retain the Greek in such terms as hyperbolic, we often favor the Latin equivalent super and say superabundance, not hyperabundance, superimpose, not hyperimpose. Consequently, with Ephesians 4.10 plainly written, we are at liberty to speak of the super heavens as a definition of the peculiar sphere of the Church of the Mystery, conscious that we are not adding a word to the inspired testimony, but are honestly giving, in this compact form, the combined intention of the two sets of expressions, en toi et pour anios, in the super heavens, and huperano panton ton or anon, up far above all heavens. The only calling or revelation that has pierced the present contemporary heaven, and touched that which can be spoken of as eternal, is that dispensation of the grace of God which has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the super heavenlies far above all.
This shows the unique character of the Church of the One Body. It is connected both by time and place with that which begins before the present heavens were made, and goes on when the present heavens shall be no more. The Church of the Mystery is the only link between the time before sin entered and the time when sin shall be no more. These things being so, it should not be surprising that the doctrine and practice of the one body are different from all others. The Berean Expositor, Volable 20, p. 111. Thus, the heavenly places is the future sphere of blessing for the Church of the Mystery. The phrase, on toi et pour anyway, occurs again in Ephesians 1.20. There the references to the ascension, which as Ephesians 4.10 affirms, was far above all heavens that he might fill all things, even as Ephesians 1.20-23 reveals that Christ our head is seated at the right hand of God, far above all principality and power, the church thus associated with him there being the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Colossians 3. One uses the adverb where, Greek, how, indicating that the Savior is in a place, that place being the right hand of God. Wherever Christ is conceived of as sitting now, it is not among heavenly beings, but far above them. Far above all, huperano, a word which is repeated in Ephesians 4.10, far above all heavens. Hebrews 4.14 teaches us that the ascended Christ passed through the heavens. Dear Shomai, 1 Corinthians 10.1, and 16.5. But not only so, in Hebrews 7.26, Christ is said to be higher than the heavens. Again, the apostle goes out of his way to enumerate the orders of heavenly beings, which are beneath the exalted position of the Savior. All, not some principalities and powers and might and dominion, and then as in Romans 8.39 where he adds, nor any other creature. So here to ensure that the entire universe is conceived of, he continues, and every name that is named, and yet further, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. How is it possible, in view of these explicit statements, to teach that where Christ sits is among heavenly beings? Yet this is not all. Paul quotes from Psalm 8, and hath put all things under his feet. Now if this quotation were to stand alone, we should admit that it does not add anything more to that already seen, but the fact is, Paul had quoted this passage on two other occasions, and has given them such a peculiar exposition as to render further discussion unnecessary. Here are his own words, in his own peculiar deduction. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Hebrews 2, 8. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. 1 Corinthians 15, 27. When therefore Paul added the quotation from Psalm 8, he clinched the interpretation in heavenly places. For it is impossible, after seeing this isolated and exalted position, to believe that it is, after all, among heavenly beings. Heavenly Places An Alphabetical Analysis Edited Abridgment